في هذا الفيديو سنسلط الضوء على study guide for a practical diagnostic mycology the objective of this guide is designed to provide student as comprehensively as possible the basic information for a practical examination for laboratory diagnostic mycology. This guide including a specimen and type of specimen collection, microscopical examination, media used for isolation of fungi and phenotypic characterization of colonies. First of all, we will deal with the specimens, collections, and selection. For selection of specimen, we should select a proper site for collection of specimen. For this purpose, we should use a suitable container for a transport of specimen specimen collection, choose an active lesion, use a septic technique, obtain the appropriate quantity, use a sterile appropriately labeled containers. We should take in your considerations that for some fungi infections, the fungal load may be low. And this inadequately amount of specimen may yield false negative result. In order to maximize the chance of recovering organism in sterile fluid, it is recommended that as much specimen as possible be sent for culture. If the volume received is not adequate, for the test requested, the physician should be contracted to provide test request. In general, swabs for the collection of material from open wounds or draining lesions are not recommended because these sites are frequently contaminated with environmental microorganisms. When possible, to increase the chance of recovery of fungal organism, the specimen should be collected before an antifungal agent is administered. Collection and delivery of specimen. Collect the specimen aseptically and place in a sterile, leak-proof containers. Deliver, deliver specimen to the laboratory within two hours. Rapid transportation is critical to ensure the survival and isolation of fastidious organism and to prevent overgrowth by more hardly bacteria. If the specimen cannot be delivered within two hours, we should incubate it normally, sterile specimen at room temperature, such like blood or bone marrow, or cerebral spinal fluid or deep lesion material. Refrigerator at 40 degrees centigrade basement that are potentially contaminated with bacterial microbes, in this case dermatological specimen conjunctiva cultures. For superficial fungi, we collected hairs. After selecting infected area, remove at least 10 hairs and 
se crab, scalp, scales, ever present. Use beside inoculation onto proper right fungal media or transport in a clinic class slides taped together to transport slide in the slide carrier. If we try to take nail specimen, first of all, we should clean the nail with alcohol and remove the distal portion of the prees under the nail and discard it. Then scrub infected nail area or clip infected nail. Use beside inoculation onto proper fungal media or transport in a clean envelope or between two clean slides as mentioned before. To get skin scraping, to reduce likelihood of the bacterial contamination, the skin surface should be disinfected with 70% alcohol. And then the specimen should be collected from the edge of the lesion and inoculated directly onto fungal media or place in a clean envelope or between two clean slides taped together. In case we have tissue, tissue collected and the transport in a sterile screw cup container. If there be a delay in the processing, we should add some small amount of sterile non bacteriostatic saline to prevent the drying. Never use formalin when you transport the spacement of tissue to the lab for culturing. Urine and fungal swab, we should collect first, first morning clean cut urine in a sterile screw cup. Use midstream collection technique. Catheterization specimen in a sterile screw cup and we should put in your mind that patient with the plastomycosis or a cryptococcus may have prostatic infection. A 24 hours urine collection and fully catheter urine specimens are not acceptable. Vaginal swab was taken as for bacterial culture. Basement examine microscopically as soon as possible. If we need to transport, we should transport immediately using printed transport media if required. The specimen should not be freeze and don't refrigerate if not likely to contain contaminating microbe and do not desiccate the Specimen. Microscopical examination of fungal specimen, we use microscope to examine the clinical specimen for the presence of fungal elements. Direct examination can be stained or unstained. Any stain method use 20% KOH, weight mount, specimen, and stain. The KOH serve as digest the protein, the prees, and the clears keratinized tissue to increase the visibility. Several specimens are subjected to KOH amount for direct examination. The material is mixed with KOH, one drop of KOH on a slide, and mixed with the fungal material, then covered with cover slip. 
The slide is then gently heated by passing through the flame two, three times. If we don't need heating, we should add DMSO to rub it the clearing in absence of heat. The staining of fungal specimen uses special stain called lactophenol cotton blue. The principle of stain that the alilene dye, the cotton blue, is acidic blue organic compound attached to amino group presence on fungal cell wall chitin. The chitin is a polymer of an acetyl glucosamine. The presence of phenol in the stain is to kill any living organism, fungicidal and bactericidal. Lactic acid used in the stain as a clearing agent and to preserve fungi element. And also we add glycerol to prevent the drying of the elements of fungi. And the specimen examined under microscope. And under microscope, the stain will help to observe HIV, conidia, and spores. The purpose for staining and Weight mount, we should use needle mount. This is the first rule to remember in mold studies is to examine young, actively growing material. All parts of colonies on natural material will often be partially decomposed or so covered with the spores as to be unrecognizable. The best way to begin is to examine the growth from margin of the colony. The lactophenol cotton blue procedure used by place a drop of 70% alcohol on a clean microscopic slide Material from culture of filamentous fungi should be removed using stuffy inoculating wire. Remove a small amount of the culture. For fungal culture, immerse the fungal material in a drop of 70% alcohol. Then, before alcohol dry out, add one or at most two drops of stain lactophenol cotton blue to the slide. And then after that, slide will be covered by cover slip and examined under microscope. Make sure that the initial examination using low power objective lens. The thinner parts of preparation generally around the edge of the mount material will yield a best image. Switch to the higher power for 40X objective for more details examination of spore and other structure. In case of Cryptococcus neoformus, to observe the capsule, we use Indian ink, Indian ink as negative staining technique, stain the background of the smear used for demonstration of capsule. And sometimes we use pyrodid acid shift bath stain on staining by this stain, fungal elements appear bright, magnetic color while the background stain green. This is very useful for tissue specimen. 
Lemza stain was used to detect cytoplasma capsule, capsule, capsule atoms in bone marrow smears and also hematoxylin and iosine stain used for staining of tissue. But this stain don't use to observe candida and aspergillus. A gram stain mainly used to observe the candida because candida stain uh, as gram positive spherical bodies larger than bacteria. Direct microscope killing is diagnostic in some fungal infection mainly dermophyte. One of method we use in the lab to see the different stages of growth of molds is a slight culture technique in order to accurately identify many fungi. It is essential to observe the precise arrangement of conidia for and the way in which spore are produced. Slide culture technique. This technique is the best technique for the microscopical examination of mold culture. But it takes time. Some fungi take months to sporulate. The time and the nature of block of agar are determinant factors. This technique allows the intact morphology of the fungi to be seen under microscope. The material used, used in this technique, we can use a sterile disposable petri dishes or a sterile glassware petri dishes and the clean slides, a clean cover slips, filter paper and V-shaped glass rod and uh, potato dextrose agar uh, containing fungal colony and also we need needle and forceps. As you see in this picture that we try to cut a block of agar and put it in a clean slide. The slide was inoculated in four faces or four angles by the uh, fungi we try to examine. The a plate, disposable plate, should have a filter paper. This filter paper will be moisted by water to prevent the drying. And after we inoculated the agar block, we put cover slip. The cover slip will be examined after four to five days. The procedure, as I mentioned, in an empty glass petri dishes, put filter paper, V-shaped glass rod, glass slide, and two cover slip. Sterilize the set above by autoclaving at 20, 22, uh, 121 degrees centigrade for 5-15 minutes. Cut a block of agar, small square, then take one block and place it in the middle of slide using a sterile needle inoculating the four sides of the BDF, potato dextrose agar, block with the fungal colonies using a forceps, place a cover slip on the top, then weight the filter paper with some sterile distilled water to prevent the drying of agar a block and incubated at 30 degrees centigrade. After 40 hours of inoculation, 
a growth and spore relation may be appear. Gently take the cover slip on the agar block and place it on a slide with lactophenol cut in blue. Then examine under a microscope 40x. If the fungi is still underdeveloped, add a fresh cover slip on the agar block and continue incubation. Another technique which is similar to this technique is scotch tape technique. The scotch tape mount is an easy and fast procedure that is used for identification of filamentous fungi. Since most structures will be intact for observation, think to gum slide of the tape. Cut a strip of scotch transparent tape and place end between thumb and index finger. Gum slide out. Open the plate with the opposite hand and press tape against the colony to identify. This slide show you the technique used that when we took the scotch tape and put between the thumb and the finger and touch the growth of the uh, fungi and then put the tape over drop of lactophenol cut in blue to see the details of the fungi. Sometimes we use double-sided sticky sketch tape. The disadvantage of this method, only the superficial structure of fungi tend to stick to the tape. This technique is really used because of the technical inconvenience. Advantages, the fungi morphology appear intact compared to lactophenol cutting blue. Okay, we have some questions here. Which component in lactophenol cutting blue is act as chromogen to stain the cell wall of fungi? We mentioned that the phenol used to kill microbes, while lactic acid and glycerol used as a preservative, and cutting blue used to stain the chitin of the cell wall of fungi. When we collect the specimen from skin lesion is done by flashing the infected area with sterile water, removing lost cells with sterile forceps, covering an open lesion with the gauze bath for 12 to 24 hours. Subscribing the periphery of lesion with the sterile skull. We say that we always take scraping from peripheral area because the young growing of fungi can be obtained there. The other question is the proper means to diagnosis of fungi is a specimen collection which require a choose an active lesion, use a septic technique, obtain an appropriate quantity, use a sterile appropriate label container. All these are required to get a proper uh, specimen for diagnosis of fungi. Direct examination of smear from fungi morphology is done using a mononuclear microscope, a bright field microscope, smear made from culture growth, gram stain all of above. 
we say that we use direct examination of a smear for fungal morphology. We can use all of them we can because among a nuclear microscope is like a bright microscope by nuclear and the smear from the culture growth must be examined to see the morphology of fungi. A gram stain may be used to study some of yeast more yeast fungi. The microscopical finding study the morphology of fungal hyphae and the spore arrangement. Sporangia characteristic example the arrangement of sporangia spore, shape of sporangium, perifor, flask like, spherical, and sporangium size. If we look to this diagram, show us how to follow the direct microscopical examination. We we'll look to the hyphae, the hyphae may be septated or aseptated. If septated hyphae may be colorful or non-color. Colorful like Asparagellus physiferium and other. While non-colorful like El Alterneria and uh, Clodosporiums and others. Acceptated high fee like mucor rhizobials, and we can see candida species, and also dimorphic fungi yeast like or sphere stoplasma plastomyces, coccidius sporotherix, and also we can see some organism which is not related to fungi but it look like fungi filamentous microorganism like mycobacterium and actinomyces the phenotypical character characterizations of fungi is to see the morphological character what is the arrangement of hyphae and conidia this including the septation of hyphae, conidial shape, size, color, pigmentation, number of conidia, types of conidia, micro or micro, and the arrangement of conidia as they are born on conidiogenous cells. You can look to the right side of the slide, you see that the hyphae may be septated the A1 and can be septated like G1 and pseudo hyphae as seen in the H here in the H pseudo hyphae and we can see also the, the microconidia, okay, and also we can see the microconidia, the small one, and different types of uh, conidia and conidia for. This is very important to understood when we uh, use microscope for examination of molds. Here we give some details. If we have a clodosporiums, the microscopical appearance, the spores or conidia develop at the end of the complex conidia force arising from septated mycelium that is usually brown. If we compare it with cephalosporiums, 
the single cell conical or epithelial spores conidia held together in a cluster at the tip of the conidia form and the rhizobius and bucar they are always identical in shape but with a few exceptions that the rhizobius have root like structure but both are non septated hyphae and at the end of conidia for there is a sporangium and inside the sporangium there is hundred of spores this is the rhizobius how it's look look under microscope we can see here the different part of rhizobius with the compare to the right side if we see this is here uh, the sporangium and the hyphae well uh, the rhizoid structure is a very important it's still not seen here in this slide we can see in next slide in next slide here we can see the rhizoids structure and this rhizoid structure is very characteristic for the identification of rhizobias this is the rhizoid structure as shown here and this in the middle is a scheme of identical uh, a drawing of rhizobias and on the right there is a slide made by a group of students and you can see here uh, the arrow pointed the uh, root like structure which called rhizoid so you can identify rhizobias very easily again this is rhizobius and you can see on the right the sporangium and the mycelium and the rhizoid this is very clear slide compare with the one in the left also the the one in the right is used koh only while the one in the left side we use stained with lectophen or catenary blue in both slides we can see that the hyphae are unsubtated, non septated hyphae and you can see the sporangium at the end of sporangia 4 with comparison with the mucor <coughs> a mucor does not have root like structure but look like similar to rhizobius they have a sporangium and the sporangium filled with the spores comparison between rhizobius and the mucor seen in this slide you can see uh, the root like structure in the one in the left and don't follow the root structure and one in the right also you can see the alternaria the slide prepared by your colleague in the left you can see the alternaria typically when see this slide also here we see cladosporium as mentioned in the description of the species alternaria which is multi-celled spore conidia are bear shaped and attached to single conidia for arising from septated mycelium while a fusiferium also multi-celled spores are oval 
and attached to conidia for arising from a septated mycelium. Next comparison between the Aspergillus and Pensilinium. And this comparison is very important. Here we have the colonies of Pensilinium and Aspergillus flavors. Pensilinium carisyngium on the right, the green one uh, determined inside and asparagus which take all the size of the plate. The pensilinium have uh, hyphae and from hyphae there is conidia for the conidia for ended by phyllids and the phyllids ended by conidia spores. The structure of pensilinium look like the hands and fingers. The differences between sporangia, ASCII and conidia consider both anatomical structure between a, a spirigellus uh, B is the pensilinium and C is the rhizobius. We see here the different arrangement of conidia in case of Aspergillus niger or pensilinium species in the middle or the sporangium in the uh, uh, rhizobius. Again, this a slide show you the pensilinium and you can see the fingers and the bone of the fingers look like pensilinium. The different uh, picture here show you types of pensilinium you seen in the lab. If we compare pensilinium with aspergillus we can see the conidia force cell vigorously grow and mycelium become thick wall, thick wall T-shape, cell called foot cell. Each T cell produce erect the branch called conidia force. Here we are. This is the food cell, the T-shape, and this is the projection of conidia for, and we have here the vesicles, and then we have the stigmata, this is stigmata, ended by the chain of conidia. This is also aspergillus, and you can see here different aspergillus form and mainly it's uh, the, sh the shape of the aspergillus in this uh, slide. If we ask this question, identify what do you see in this slide? Aspergillus species, Pensilinium species, Cephalosporinium species, or Mucor species. Look again and try to answer this question. Also, here we have identified the following slide. Also, we have the Spirigellus or Pensilinium or Cephalosporinium or Mucor. In addition to the feature mentioned above, the natural of hyphal structure, if the hyphal is elongated or spiral or nodular or clams or sporo, uh, sporochi or chlamydioconidium, the hyphae conidia and microconidia, microconidia, will be seen in the following slides. 
Look here. This is the spiral hyphae. And this is very characteristic shape of hyphae. On the top right, this is microconidia, which is look like cigar. And we have here a chlamydiospores. Chlamydiospores on hyphae. This is the macroconidia. You can see here the the end is pointed end of microconidia. In other words, here we have the rounded end of microconidia. Each of these conidia will belong to a specific species of fungi. If we look to Plastomyces dermatitis, we can see the pear-shaped conidia at the end of supporting hyphae look like lollipops. يشبهون المصاصات اللي يطلعوها الأطفال اللي يعد الأطفال تكون تكون شكلها مميز الهايفي يطلعون من عدهم برانشينج صغير. يكونون هم عبارة عن لولي بوبس. Similar to a previous slide, there is a new sporia. The slide shows the branched a plastic acropetal chain of conidia formed by fungi. This is microsporium canis, as I mentioned. Which ended by pointed end like hook, hook end. And this is a trichophytor ribra macroconidia, which look like cigar shape at large and look like cigar shape. And here we have an arthroconidia, an arthroconidia which is like the pearl shape. In coccidiomatis. The sexual spore is one of a feature that can be seen in a slide if we use with mucor or rhizobius. We can see a thick walled spore formed during sexual reproduction in the phycomyces. In the second part, we will discuss the culturing method. Culture must infection. Most of the infectious agents identify grow from clinical specimen. The fungi, majority of fungi, are growing on artificial media, like bacteria. These media. A specific media and selective media to grow fungi, not to grow others. And we will see the specificity of this media. First of all, the media used for primary isolation may vary accordingly to personal preferences. Material from non-sterile side should be captured on media that will support fungal growth, but also inhibit bacteria. Fungal media may contain antibacterial agent like a chloramphenicol or gentamicin or penicillin or streptomycin and saprofloxacin. These agents should not be included, however, when actinomyces are suspected, because actinomyces are bacteria and susceptible to antibiotic. Media may also be made selectively by additional of eukaryotic protein synthesis inhibitor cyclohexamide at 0.5 gram per ml. This may be useful in detection of dimorphic fungi and dermophyte. Many clinically significant sapro 
find you may be suppressed leading to failure in recovering opportunistic etiological agent in compromise host. Therefore, media with and without this agent should be routinely be employed. Enriched media with 5 to 10% sheep erythrocyte may be incorporated into pottery for facididious thermal dimorphic fungi, such as histoplasma capsulate. The following pathogenic fungi are resist to cyclohoxamide like Plastomyces dermatitis, Stoplasma capsulatum, and others, the cyclohexamide inhibit rules out the above fungi. Resistant to cyclohexamide may indicate one of the above pathogen because the dimorphic fungi, always the pathogenic fungi resist to cyclohexamide while the saprophytic fungi will be killed by this agent. Here one of the questions we need you to thinking about what effect does cyclohexamide have been have when added to the media. If we have different type of media like saporodia dextrose agar which consists of bipton dextrose and agar you can see here the percentage of glucose high concentration of sugar about 40 gram per liter and low ph the ph of media 4.5 to 5.5 this selectivity prevent the growth of most bacteria and makes it selectively for fungi. Sometime to saporodia dextrose agar, we add some antibiotics such as chloramphenicol or mixture of penicillin streptomycin to saporodia dextrose agar to inhibit bacterial multiplication and contamination. Saprophytic fungi can be inhibited by additions of cyclohexamide to the saporodia dextrose agar. This is the saporodia dextrose agar bottles, and after autoclaving and cooling to 56 degrees centigrade, power them into a plate and use for cultivation of fungi. We should put in your mind if we have dangerous fungi that have spores and the spore might be inhalated, so we should be growing these fungi in bottle in a state of dishes. But these dishes use for growing of asparagus or uh, rhizobias or muca. Think about this question. Why fungi prefers to grow on acidic media? An example of saporodia dextrose agar with cyclohexamide and chloramphenicol named mycocyl agar to isolate pathogenic fungi, especially dermophyte, from contaminated specimen, it inhibit bacteria and most saprophyte fungi. That means the mycocyl may be used for isolation of dermophytes. To determine the cyclohexamide resistance of a fresh isolate as screen test for pathogenic fungi, the mycocyl media must be not incubated at 35 degrees centigrade since the antibiotic at higher temperature may be inhibited, may inhibit pathogenic fungi. 
Another types of media ox girl agar which is used for rapid production of chlamydiospore by candida albicans and potato dextrose agar used in a slight culture technique and saporodia gentamicin agar slopes this is slopes containing saporodia agar plus gentamicin the gentamicin used to inhibit the bacterial contamination also we have a brain heart infusion agar used for fastidious fungi isolation of opportunistic and dimorphic fungi from uncontaminated specimen also to convert some dimorphic fungi from mycelial phase to yeast phase when incubated at 37 degrees centigrade we have also blood egg albumin agar PA commercially prepared by biomed lab contain Columbia agar base 5% sheep blood agar and albumin and uh, antibiotic like gentamicin vancomycin and used for isolation of histoplasma capsulator after we inoculated the media the media must be incubated most fungi are able to grow at room temperature 22 degrees centigrade while few pathogenic fungi like cryptococcus dimorphic fungi can grow at 37 degrees centigrade so we need duplicate plate one at 20 degree the other one at 37 degree saprophytic fungi grow much quickly than pathogenic fungi since some fungi grow slowly culture not be discarded for four to six weeks and incubated aerobically clonal morphology fungi are identified on the basis of colony morphology and pigmentation the phenotypic yeast and yeast like organism identification after we culturing the yeast yeast cultures consisting of unicellular organisms that replicate by budding may be handled on open pinch adhering to the same safety precautions as for bacteria yeast and yeast like fungi should be examined for their colony color white to creamy to pink brownish black for yeast a species one observe in saporodia dextrose agar blue to green to pink candida species when inoculated in chromogen agar give different color for different candida species during a gram stain the candida epicans appear having budding cells and this is very distinguished feature that differentiated candida epicans from uh, streptococcus or staphylococcus bacteria because streptococcus and staphylo appears as spherical gram positive but the candida have bud bacteria have not the growth rate and temperature required microscopical morphology is important to arrange these steps to identify of yeast microscopical morphology we can see the presence of plastoconidia 
کپسول، جرم تیوب، سیدو هایفی، ترو هایفی، کلامیدیو کونیدیه Yeast morphology is most reliable observed on corn meal agar plate using the mall method. This technique involves streaking very small amount of yeast on the plate in two parallel lines, the streaking back and forth, then covering the area with a flame sterile cover slips. The plate is inoculated at room temperature and the cover slip examined microscopically under microscope. One of the features that distinguish Candida elpicans from other Candida species is the germ tube method. The germ tube method is buds and pseudo hyphae can be distinguished from germ tube by construct attached at the point of origin. Germ tube do not show constructions at the point of origin. If we try to use germ tube technique. We need albumin sera, stock solutions, and we need a clean slide, clean cover slip, clean glassware, and pasteur pipette. The procedure depends to take a liquid about 0.5 ml of serum, serum, a human serum, or media and test tube, make a light suspension of suspect yeast colony by touching one to two large colony or three to four colonies and incubate it with a serum for two to three hours in 35 to 37 degrees centigrade and examine the weight mount microscopically for a production of germy tube. What can we see? Look here. The interpretation of result. Germy tube R appendix have the weight and three to four times the length of the yeast cell from, from which they are arise. There is no constructions between the yeast cell and germination tube. The positive result means the presence of short lateral filament germ tube, but while the negative result, the yeast cell only always two piece. Positive result a short hyval filament extension arising laterally from the yeast cell with no construction at the origin point. Why negative result? No hyphal extension arising from the yeast cell or the short hyphal extension with constructions at the point of origin. This is the positive and negative of germ tube methods. The phenotypic mold identification is very important and we have discussed in the first slide what we look for when we use a direct microscopical examination. Also we can use serology for detection of antifungal and this is helpful in diagnosis of subcutaneous and systematic mycosis and for the prognosis and response to antifungal drug. Different serological techniques that use including agglutination, immunodiffusion, counter immunoelectrophoresis, complement fixation taste, immunofluorescent, 
radio amino assay and ELISA. Recently, most mycologists using molecular technique because the molecular technique are accurate and shorter period of time and as well as detect those fungi that are difficult or dangerous to be cultivated in vitro. From this molecular technique we use the DNA phase the area attempt to use DNA data and fungal identification and the technique based on such randomly amplify polymorphic DNA and restriction fragment LRFLPS. These techniques were however difficult to standardize between the laboratory which was seen as major drawback. Also, we can use the rapid random amplify polymorphic DNA and this technique using PCR to amplify a genomic region containing an apparently sequences restrictions fragment. Also, we can use the DNA DNA reassociation studies and the newer method, the mass spectral metry. Maldi-TOF and uh, 16S ribosomal sequences are more precise method for expanding taxonomy of yeast species. Also, we can use histopathological identification by use specific stain. From these stains, we have hemotoxylin and azine stain which gave color of fungi being to pinkish and we can demonstrate an inflammatory response trains of fungi always uh, use this technique for uh, determination of an etiot pigment uh, shown in most nuclei of the yeast cell but there is limitation of this stain does not stain many fungi does not stain filamentous bacteria it is not adequate for screening tissue for fungal infection the gms is a stain other stain stain most fungi viable or not can stain filaments bacteria but there is limitation may over stain fungi and Oscar internal details cannot be detects the host response also we can use combination between GMS and hemotoxylin uh, toxilin aosine stain we have here one of the quizzes the joint fluid spacement are inoculated on La, look here the joint fluid the joint fluid must be sterile must be sterile so we use brain heart infusion or saporodia broad or membrane a membrane filter or blood culture media other question you should thinking about one of the following fungi stain demonstrate an inflammatory response we just mentioned a few minutes ago also you have here some questions that may be useful for you to think about the uh, material we discussed okay one of the important things we study that identification of dermophyte and we say that dermophyte have three species the trichophyton the microsporium the epidermophyton and the microscopy can identify dermophyte by presence of fungal hyphae if the hyphae branch making up mycelium or there is arthrospore or broken of spores or arthroconidia or there is a spore inside the hair like endothorax or outside exothorax 
a fungal element are sometimes difficult to find especially if the tissue is very inflamed a yeast infection can be identified by presence of uh, budding yeast or pseudohyphae and uh, dermophytes we can see in their microscope the following macroconidia and macroconidia and like this one for trichophyton and this is a trichophyton mantigrophyte we uh, see this spiral hyphae and uh, we can also use hair uh, a preform, uh, preforations test for detection of dermophyte in the skin and by place hair in the water and vial inoculated with a small fragment of taste fungi and incubated at room temperature individual hair are removed at interfill up to four weeks and examined microscopically in lactophenol cut in blue isolate of trichophyton mentigrophyte produce marked localized area of bitting and mark erosion whereas those of a trichophyton rebrum do not this is the taste this is called hair porophation taste for dermophyte distinguish between isolate of dermophyte particularly trichophyton mentigrophyte and its variant and uh, you can see the individual hair are removed at interval and examine to differentiate between trichophyton rebram and trichophyton mentigrophyte the positive reaction called uh, C in the left side of the slide, while the negative trichophyton rebram at the right side. Again, here we have uh, a group of dermophyto organism like trichophyton, and I put the explanation for each of these. Uh, fungi at the right to read it and compare with the uh, figure on the left this is all this is el epidermophyton which is uh, uh, the third species of dermophyta and here the microsporium canis which contain pointed pointed end of micro uh, media and the rounded end of microsporium gypsum and the rounded types of micro of anum and here we uh, finished all the chapter that would like to uh, cover in the lab thank you